On top of old Horror Hill, in a secret laboratory, Professor Weirdo and Count Kook were in their monstrous glory. Six drops of the essence of terror, five drops of sinister socks. When the stirring's done... All right, welcome, everybody. This is a new format we're doing. It's called TMR Lounge. See, the podcast thing is... is much due to my OCD done in a very structured manner. We probably write out five pages of scripts and ideas and structure it some way. And sometimes sometimes we just want to talk and have fun and we're a bit lazy. And so this is what we're going to do when we have nice house guests or no plans mm -hmm. for anything elaborate. And with us today, we got uh, Chris Shul here who has his own podcast. And perhaps he's one of the inspirations for the TMR podcast because he had me and Chris on. Oh, stop it. You, you started your own podcast because you're an exhibitionist like me and you love talking. Come on. Let's okay. really here. Oh, well, that, that, <laughs> there's, I'm, I'm there's an element I, of that. I may have I, had something to do with it. You are an excuse and a, very, and a rather uh, helpful one. But uh, again, we have no plan, no no clue what we're going to talk about. So let's start. I mean, let's start with you, dude. Like, let's find out who your corporate guess. sponsor is today. My corporate sponsor? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a, we were just talking a while ago just about how. When you're trying to get something going, like a podcast, you, you kind of have to choose between marketing yourself, doing the whole corporate kind of like, I want to be all proper and not say any controversial stuff and only not talk about UFOs or talk about religion. Or you can kind of just be real and talk about what the, what the hell you want to talk about. Mm. And I think that's what podcasts are about. The whole idea is that people get to see what you're really like, like they're having a conversation with you. Mm. And you're not trying to to tell your information to a particular demographic. You're just speaking. People listen to a podcast and they know who you are, as opposed to me putting on this voice over here and saying, well, yes, as you, as you can see, I'm an intellectual and I only talk about very, very important things. And no, I, I don't want you to get the right... I can, I can, I can, I gotta, I got to disagree with that in okay. some way, in, in a point that when we talk about a subject that we want to we pick, we've got to study it, we've got to go through it. So you're not really, you're not really getting our personal opinion because sometimes we do have to play devil's advocate, even if we agree with what we're talking about, because we want that conversation to flow back no, and forwards. You know, but that, now, in this yeah. particular podcast, yeah. we can talk about anything. <laughs> we can say whatever we feel like. It should be y'all. The, the idea, really, you know, behind the, the structure, is if you're talking about a topic, you see, we live in a world of opinions. People, like, go out, they watch the news, and they're told what to think, and then they parrot it out. Or maybe they watch, like, alternative media, which also tells them what to think. It might, be, might even be true. But they never actually check out the facts. They just parrot out what they hear. And, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to start, you know, podcast with, if we're talking about a topic, I'd like to dig up some That's actual facts. And then you see, like, well, this is how some people think the facts connect. This is how other people think they connect. And sort of this is what our speculation is. But, like, people learn something that they didn't know about the topic. But, you know... I respect that. You don't want to be giving out, you know, crappy information out there. That's one of, that's one of the things I love about the, the Jericho experience. Like, every every time they bring up an issue, they're always on their laptop, you know, checking out facts and trying to get the information as, uh, as legit as they can. Because, yeah. I mean, when you're doing a, a podcast that's actually getting a lot of viewers... Uh, you, you you send out spurious information, and then a few days later, everyone's like, you don't know what the, you know what you're talking about. This is completely wrong. You know, you'll have physicists that are uh, that are challenging you on your uh, notions of how the universe works and things like that. And yeah, the fact of the matter is that you yeah you people are gonna call you out on your shit in this day and age. So you better yeah. make sure that you got your you know you. But then there's you know there's you know then there's complex world situations and issues, and then there's people. I think people are and people's stories and their perspectives are about as interesting. Maybe not as valuable for you to live your life tomorrow and make decisions about, you know, how your family is going to survive and thrive, but certainly as interesting as uh, just about anything. And, well, Chris Shul is one of the most interesting people I know. Oh, stop so. it, man. That's, that's ridiculous. Dude, like, well, like see, no, seriously, <laughs> like, tell us. completely insane, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it's not about the views, man. It's the shit you do. All right, like, this dude started off doing video game design and programming and then wound up in IT and then wound up wanting to be a singer and he is a singer and a performer and then now he has a podcast well, and, and now I've heard all that I, 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 I have to, I have to look at him like this for, for, look deep down I've always been in the exhibition has been a performer my main passion has always been music performing serenading seminaries as, as you do but you know how it is your parents always want you to become a doctor, I'm sure as hell not going to be a doctor, yeah. not smart enough for that, so you, you end up kind of um, meeting halfway and doing some kind of nerdy topic, and I, I always loved the idea of creating as a kid, and I got mm -hmm. into computer programming computer games and QBasic and all that kind of stuff, but within all of that, I always wanted to be a singer, but I just figured it's not practical for me to 
finish high school and get a job as a what well, and do some performing arts course that's not really going to do anything. So I just went about doing my course, and then I realized how much I hated software engineering and look, eventually ended up slipping into what I really love doing, which is performing, singing, dancing, mm. acting, being a complete fool. And Dude, like, I mean, all right, let's, you know, I think we can get into something quite interesting here. You know, mm. we, we live in a, a an environment where we're drowning in pop culture, mm -hmm. you know, and, and very often I th I'd say it's for the worst. Just the other day mm -hmm. I, I was filling in in this technology class and there's a bunch of girls there that are saying, oh, we're drawing this. Do you mind if we listen to the radio? Mm. Turn on the commercial radio. I think about was some crap, Nova or Fox or something like that. Mm -hmm. And literally, man, for an hour straight, these girls are singing along to her. They know every word of every freaking song. Mm -hmm. and I can't tell the difference. They all sound the same. It's always this doof, doof bass line. And it's this engineer night. And maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, what's wrong with that, man? But, like, well, what's, seriously. What's wrong with people enjoying themselves, having so, a good time? It, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. it, it you know, I'm talking... You know, we've been making good music for 50 years, man. Like, Jimi Hendrix, it's been a while. You know, and there's a million genres. And yet, you know, you're in a classroom, and this level of conformity is such that, out of the choice of a million artists and a billion songs, they, they, they all know the same 20, and they're all chanting along well, the way. Well, can I, can, I, can I add to that? Yeah. When you go into a workshop, right, where guys my age, I'm, I'm in my 40, I'm 40 now, yeah. And I walk into these workshops. Much and this guy's. You just turned 40 yet? No, no, I'm a bit older now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, you look so, younger. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So <laughs> I go into these workshops and I see guys my age and they're working in their desk and doing their job and they're playing a different radio station, commercial as well, but they play all the 80s and 90s hits, right? And these guys know them. In the back of their mind, they grew up with that stuff and they've, they've played them their whole life. And I think the thing is, to me, I hate it. I can't stand the music. I mean, I love the music at that time, but I will not go to work and listen to it. Because what I think it does is it just keeps them in that mindset of, you know, when they were growing up, the good times and all the stuff, and they're working these mundane, boring jobs. But in the back of their mind, they're going, you know, when I, when this song came out, I was, you know, I was uh, doing this and I was going yeah, out with her. Better, it's a, it's yeah. a mind control thing. I'm 100% sure it's, a, right. it's to keep you... In that, yeah. in that perpetual, that, everything's okay. That, that is, you know, like, all right, we've kind of opened up, like, how how pervasive and, in, in a way, conformist and possibly even mind control. I like, personally think it is. is. True. But it, it's, some of it is awesome. Like, there are, I would say, one in ten pop songs I'm going to, like, jump around when I hear. I mean, much of the stuff that Michael Jackson did, you know. I, I mean, I, Guns N' Roses were mainstream, you know. Nirvana was mainstream. But that... Even the odd Kanye West song, you know, I really like. But look, look here's a question that I have. Is it Michael? How do you? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, how does somebody make it? Like, what? How? Where do these people get? Oh, this is a really good question. Pulled man. up <laughs> into the system, you know. I was just talking. You're talking about the music industry in particular. Yeah. Well, I would say at the moment, it's changed a lot over the last ten years because of these reality shows like X Factor, Australian Idol, all that kind of stuff, and. I suppose I can speak quite openly about this kind of stuff because I, I recently just went through the the, the auditions and all you, you've, been, you've been through a, yeah, a few, I, like, yeah, several. You've been I've, through what? Um, you know, my my band did X Factor a while back. You know, we made a boot camp and then I tried wow. it again. I've done Australian Idol a few times, pop stars, all that kind of stuff, and a few of them. And recently, I went through the process. And people, uh, first of all, to answer your question, right? Pe most of the uh, the people that we see making in the industry in this day and age, like really big time. I mean, besides a few, obviously it's different. Um, different, um, obviously, on some level, but for the most part, what I'm trying to say is that we see most of the, the big artists coming out through these reality TV shows or through shows like Neighbors and where, where they get all this viewership because it's so hard for an artist to, to get that kind of sway unless, of course, you're well known. That's why, unless, of course, you're in something like The X Factor, it's mm -hmm. really hard to get the kind of fan base that uh, you, you acquire in order to, to get signed to a massive label. And mm -hmm. it's such, people have a completely, like, misguided attitude as to what goes on in the show. Like After recently doing it, 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 it is not a reality TV show in the sense that they're basically not just filming what's going on there. It's like a movie, and you're all playing roles. I mean, the amount of times they will get you to do something over and over again, like you've just gone through one round, you're like, yes, that's freaking awesome, I can't believe you got through that, and your friends are there, and they're like, the cameraman's like, hey man, can you just do that again, what you just did, so I can get oh. that? That was what, well, you, you want me to do that? It, yeah, it's just perfectly, just as you did it right there, and you see people reacting this shit, because they're not actors, they just, it, look, it looks so fake and so awkward. Wow. Every single thing that you do from 
walking out to register to uh, to practicing. It is all it's it's not scripted in the sense they won't tell you exactly what to do, but they'll they'll tell you exactly what to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Unless you're doing I what know. you're meant to be doing, they'll I know. tell you. Can you just like walk a little bit? I know. I I just I look just over the weekend. I went through the X Factor uh, auditions. It is one of the most draining processes because. There are all these preliminary rounds, but people don't realize is that there are so many other rounds that you have to go through, even before you get to the freaking judges and you perform. You've got to go through the singing coaches, you've got to get through the, go through the producers, the executive producers, then they, they make sure that you're going to have the right image, all this kind of stuff. And then even when you get through the boot camp and you, you make the final 12 so before you... Like, yeah. If you ever wound up in front of like one of those panels of judges, absolutely, several times, man. Like, it's tough. Like, tell, tell, like, tell me about the first time. Tell first time the first I went time. up. First time I went up, you know, really, really psyched. Went with my friends. I had like six, eight of them there, which wasn't a good idea because they had to wait the entire day with me, and I felt, I felt their nervousness for me. And hmm. it's like you, all your friends are waiting on, on you, you know, the last twelve hours just to just before you go up in front of the judges, and you're like, oh shit, they're really counting on me right now. It was really, really stressful, and Look, you finally get up there, and uh, you know you have all you're completely psyched up. The the producers have told you that look, you're absolutely amazing and all this kind of stuff. Then mm -hmm. you finally get in front of the judges, and it is so. First of all, it is so unbelievably hard, right, to to get on get into the next round. The judges, you need to absolutely blow those judges away. Like even if you're a uh, you're let's say you you put on a really really good performance and all this kind of stuff, unless of course you you meet their criteria. Um. I I don't know I I don't know what the hell they're thinking but I I feel as if look when I when I first went up um look, two of the judges ended up saying yes the other two said no the crowd was really much on my side they're all saying come on come on yeah and the guy Sebastian was a little um little reluctant to put me through but finally said yes because the crowd was on my side Ronan who I I freaking worship man like he was like look man I'm, he, you, you perform in front of these people yeah wow, he was man. he said I was so who was on the panel well when I was there it was Ronan guy Sebastian. Uh, Natalie, what's her name? I can't remember. Really, some, some, uh, yeah, and then this pop stars girl. Who um, who was the one, the girl that actually really liked me? She just said said yes straight away. But Ronan gave me the biggest hard time because I'm really arrogant when I'm on stage. I'm yeah. like, Yo, what's my name? <sighs> all that kind of shit, you know? Love you, all that kind of shit. I try to play it up like hardcore, and Ronan freaking hated that shit. You know, he's like, you know, you 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 come across as you think you're better than you actually are, and you come across as you have to. You have to be. No, he actually said that to me, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, how do I respond to this? And uh, bottom line was he thought I was a bit too kind of, you know, full on, didn't like me that much, ended up saying no. Um, you know, Nat, you know, just definitely, you know, just didn't like me, ended up saying no, and Guy reluctantly said yes, our girl said said no, and so, uh, said yes, yeah, sorry, two, I, I, got, two, I got two, and it was such an emotional bummer because for the last you know, several months, I mean, there's all yeah. a, the whole audition process, right? Here's the thing. It starts, let's say, it might start in December, okay? Mm. Go through all of these auditions, right? And then in May, you might, after going through all these preliminary auditions, mm. you finally get up to the judges and then you perform. And it's like, throughout all of that, you're going through all of these different stages and like you build up so much, um, so much nervous energy, just hoping that this is going to come to fruition. And you finally get to the day and Sometimes it feels like it's such a, a, tr a tremendous thing that you have to overcome just to uh, just to even get on the show. I mean, I know people that I know I'm digressing a lot over here, but I know people that have um, that have actually gone into boot camp and made the final twelve and haven't even been featured on the show at all. I, there was a girl. A lot of this they won't even show a lot of the uh, the performers unless, of course, there is something really, really uh, interesting about them. In fact, you're not going to get on that show based on three things. You have to basically you get on that show in. If you're in one of these three categories, if you're e either really, really entertaining, you're really, really bad, or you're really, really good. And there are a lot of right, people... One yeah. more, there's one more. What? I noticed because my wife watches The Voice, right? No, I don't, okay. I don't watch it. But she said, any girl over the age of 30, doesn't matter what she looks like, she's not getting in, right? That's it. And she says, I, I can't see the judges every time. They're supposed to be listening to The Voice, but they're not because they're coming in and they're going... Oh no, you know, she's not. She's not is good it, enough. Is that all right? Well, I, I don't and know. The, and the I've other never. Thing I watched the show like once, and to to be honest, like <laughs> I, the, the the one thing that kind of hurts me, like you know, when you, this notion that you're you're right, you're vying for the approval of these four people, yeah, right, who generally themselves were aren't, just aren't great. Were just products. I mean, you know, somebody like their face or some aspect of their voice gave them some songs to sing and. You know, occasionally, I'm sure Ronan Keating wrote a bunch of his music, but for the most part, people there. Natalie Imbruglia is talented, but 
I don't know. What the fuck? Guy Sebastian. Some guy with an afro. Look, they're, songs, they're all accomplished like, singers. All but, accomplished performers, no doubt about it. I'm not taking any away from them. Can I? I'm just saying that it's a really hard growing process. But yeah. I, I'm trying to say this. You know, you're trying mm. to get approval of these four people. And you're trying mm. to make yourself sound appealing to this broad. You've got to be different, though. You've got to, you've got to have, bring something no, no, different here's my, to No, no, here's else. my thing. Yeah. Like, Amanda Palmer. You know Amanda Palmer. No. There, that's my point, all right? Amanda Palmer had this little band called the Dresden Dolls. She's like a really kind of artsy thing, and she was, she's bloody good. She's amazing. Uh, we'll, at the end of this podcast, we're going to play one of Chris Shul's songs. Mm-hmm. We're going to get you an original, and I'll play something from Amanda Palmer. But long story short, she's awesome. But nonetheless, her sound is quite unique original, and she, big label picks her up, and then mm-hmm. she, she sells 25,000 records. Now, she thinks it's pretty freaking amazing because you know she was singing in bars and street corners and now she's got 25,000 anyway they go like da, 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 this is rubbish you know next album we want you to do it this way this way this that's way that's terrible your music doesn't appeal to the masses 25,000 that, is unacceptable that's the compromise and though. you know what yeah. here's the thing You've the 25,000 people that liked Amanda Palmer loved Amanda Palmer Not we were talking bullshit that they yeah to be we are talking about a world world of 7 billion and he, she leaves the label goes on Kickstarter and says I need 100 grand to make me a new album because I got all these songs written she raises 1.2 million what the frack that's insane and I'm saying that you know the world is so big you know if, if you as an artist if you appeal to 1% of the world 99% of people think you're shit but if 1% just go like that's it, man. It, it just, just that's the sound. I just love that. Mm-hmm. You, you know, one we're, we're talking one percent of the world is seventy million. I think. Yep, seventy. You know, well, one percent of the Western world is still whatever fifteen million. It's yeah, an incredible number of people. And this notion that we we got to push this music that somehow we'll like dumb it down or simplify it or make it as catchy and as simple that the biggest Infinity. margin you know we, we expand that from that one to like 60 you get something so plastic like Justin Bieber like I swear I, it, it's you, you just That's there the is nothing I don't, I, I, original I don't think so because I, don't, I, know, about I, know, I know the other thing too is what I was getting back to before mm. on The Voice the only other way to get in too is this kid comes up, blonde hair, not bad looking guy, right? Yeah. Pumps out a song. His granddad's Barry Crocker, right? Well, for, uh, Australian famous singer from the '60s, right? Big mm. deal. And they get him to come onto the show in the you know in the background, going, "Yeah, it's my nephew, and he's yeah. really good, and all the rest." Of it. He bunches, knocks out a song. Mm. Nothing special about. It. I mean, it was real compared to some of the talent yeah. was up there. Really average. But he got onto the show because he's. Yeah. Well, guys, you know, it's, 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 it's about ratings at the end of the day. I mean, know. I look, I can't speak so much of The Voice. I mean, I know a few people have gone on it, but I'll tell you, with The X Factor, uh, it is, well, it's called The X Factor. It's not just about singing ability. It's about performance. You have to appeal to the widest demographic. In fact, when you're actually um, auditioning, just before, even before you go to the judges, they're trying to, they want, you, they want you to be molded into a specific kind of persona. For instance, I was the singer-dancer. Even though I wanted to do more kind of you know, soulful, John Legend kind of stuff. They're like, look, we want you to do this. And I spent so much time arguing with them. This isn't what I want to do. Like, the judges are, I want to show off my vocals over here. No, no, we, look, I, you have to do this kind of song. So I want to get my like, shirt off. Wow. Did you say that a lot? Yeah, I want to get my shirt off. Well, no, but they, they, they have an idea as to what's going to appeal to the biggest amount of uh, people, and therefore they want you to fit this role. So it's kind of like a casting call. Yeah. It's kind of like we have a role for a singer, dancer over here. We've got a role for a, a soul person, a Jamaican, you know, a Rastafarian, oh. hip-hop dude, and you have to fit these roles. Oh. Otherwise, you won't actually just, get, the, get the cut. But in order to you, for you to fit, you got to make yourself inauthentic. And, I mean, I'll tell yeah. you one, one thing. Or you just like a hillbilly. One thing that, that if you, I, I come to Melbourne in 2007. And I gotta say, you know, I was into the general pop culture. I was going out, freaking buying really expensive clothes, clubbing, watching Australian Idol for about a year. Mm-hmm. And in that, you know, in that year of my very kind of <laughs> vanilla mainstream life, I remember watching Australian Idol, and there was a guy called Marty Simpson. Now, Marty Simpson, he had a pretty kind of beachy, cruisy, nice voice, you know, and he wrote a bunch of his songs, and he wanted to sing them. And at every stage, they were saying, like, dude, you really don't want to sing your own songs. And I'm just thinking, like, what Leave the, the guy. fuck? Leave like, the what guy. the, I'll, you know, what I, even then, as I said, even though I was at my most 
uncreative vanilla self that I ever have been in my entire life, I was still looking at it going like... You're a trash. Is that what you're trying to say you were? No, well, <laughs> give me a second. I'm just thinking like... I'm open to see something original here. And yeah. it is, it, it's like that antithesis. Of, you know, that's what pop music is. It's that antithesis of originality. We've come up with these stereotypes. We, well, what are they like? We got the singer dancer. We got the soul man. We got the pretty yeah, country like, girl. And they come up to you and they say, uh, uh, Chris, uh, can you sing country western? <laughs> can you wear big and brace overalls? Can you go? Absolutely. If, Listen, if, if it gets me on TV, I'll do it. Doing original songs. <laughs> and look, the fact that I, I've been actually told this several Ooh. times, you know, when I did Superfest, I really wanted to do a, a, another, like, not not a reality TV show, but this mm. competition, you know, of 60,000 people tried out for it. Basically, uh, when it came out to the final rounds, top 10, um, we had to decide what, what songs we wanted to do. We could only do one song, and uh, I wanted to do an original, because even if I didn't get in, because I was going to be performing in front of some pretty big names, like Shaka Khan and whatnot, yeah. I wanted an opportunity to, to sing something that was my own. And I, once again, I basically had to go over the... The, uh, one of the producers and actually get in touch, email like the, uh, the executive producers about, because it's stated in the, the contract that we could do any, so I didn't say anything about the originality, all that kind of mm. stuff. And um, I, yeah, basically everyone, you know, the guys were telling me, look, you can't do an original. And he was trying to do it for my benefit. The, the logic is that people, you want people to uh, obviously be familiar with the song that you're singing because you're trying to rally up um, people along, to, yeah, to, you know? and yeah. if you're doing an original, you're taking a big risk. I mean, I think they're saying this because from their own experiences, most people who do originals generally they get the most positive feedback. As an artist, though, it's kind of like it's the antithesis of being an artist, not yeah. expressing originality. Isn't but, that why you get into it? Like, but you kind of got some beat, some sound in your head that you got to create. It's, a you know? it's called Idol. For instance, Australian Idol. It's called Idol because you want to... You want to represent the. Free, you want to be a star. You. It, it's not. It's a popularity contest in a big, yeah. big, big way. Yes, it's a. It's about excellence, but it's also. It's also just about being freaking well known. Everyone wants to wants to get get their face out there. Yeah, so but, they but can, like just imagine. For other I get my face out there, yeah. and I have nothing interesting to say, and I'm a dumbass, and now there's five thousand people, either dumb people like me, or anyone with any freaking half a brain thinks like, what's this twat I'm doing on TV? Like, I. Don't, I somehow wouldn't be happy about myself. Like, I don't know. I mean, so many people today that – I'd rather impress one person that I respect than 10,000 yeah, people. Yeah, but that's that not the way they see I it, don't give Sonny. Exactly. But the other, thing too, the other thing, too, is I don't understand is yeah. like, you go out there and you go, I want to do an original song, right? Hmm. Now, if you're going to – Redo someone else's song. You either got to do it identical because it's going to be hard because you got to get the voice right. You gotta, mm -hmm. If you got to copy someone else's song, people want to. Oh, it's not the same. He's not the same. They're judging you on the differences, or you got to hit it in a totally different way. Yeah. Like you got to say, I'm going to change this around. It might yeah. sound better. And some people go, No, no, I like the old way. Yeah. It's but freaking... if you sing an original one, yeah. you've got nothing to compare against. Yeah. That's true. And I think isn't that what you're all about is to sing those original songs? Look to me. Ultimately, it just has to be good. People mm. will appreciate when something is really good. If yeah. it, I, to be honest, that. as much as I love artistry and originality, my favorite performers were people that didn't even write their own songs, like Elvis Presley, and you know most of the pop stars that you think of in this day and age. They either co-write, you know, a lot yeah. of the songs, or they don't do any of the songs originally at all. Because I mean, you're not most most teeny boppers that are looking at these stars think they don't think, oh, this person's written this song. They just go, oh, this person's so talented and so oh, sexy and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's only I guess the more cerebral people that are more inspired by the fact that this is their original work. So when you hear someone performing something, you just appreciate the song. People don't think of, let's say, um, uh, a John Legend classic like Ordinary People and go, oh, John Legend is so awesome for writing that, that song. John Legend didn't write that song. It was written by, uh, um, I forget his name, one of the guys from Black Eyed Peas, Will I Am. Most people, oh. most people look at these songs. Like, I'll, I'll tell you the terrible thing. I don't yeah. Know who, who's John Legend? Oh, well, look. Is he young? He's, old? Just, he's, he's a well known soul star. It was just a random name. But the whole point is that most people don't really think about the fact that it's been written by someone and therefore, yeah. well, at least I don't. I think a lot of people just appreciate the fact that it's an amazing song and they give credit to the person that's singing it. So, look, you don't make a lot of money in the industry that way if you're not writing your own songs, but it's a great way of getting your name out there and becoming popular. But if you want to have a, have longevity in the industry, you got to write. you got to write your ass off. Otherwise, it's really hard, man. Mm. But, you know, like, yeah. have you ever thought, I don't know, I mean, you, in, in a sense, you know, you're, you're a good-looking guy and you have this. Why, thank you. I do have my celebrity spot. And, and you me. have this kind of, I, I mean, I don't know how to, we were playing music in the end, but I don't know, you've got. I, I, I have would, this big swagger and, like, i got a big dick and I can use, yeah. that, use that and kind of use this microphone. It's pretty cool, eh? 
No, no, no. You sound. You like that? You sound like. <laughs> I wouldn't say stereotypical because it's different, but you have the. I remember you have a certain, my Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah. that kind of thing going on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have this kind of deep voice and shit like that, but I don't know, like. It's a sexy chocolate thing. <laughs> sexy chocolate. Two Black words magic. should be in the same sentence all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know what the worst where, thing is? The worst thing that? is the worst thing is when it we go back to that competition mm. where you where you, you you go through all that process. It's months yeah. after months. And you're really, and you get on the show, or you might even not even be on the show, but you're a really good singer, and you get judged by these people that yeah. you, know, you say you looked so up to. Until you and then what happens? Yeah. And they go, "You didn't win, or you you failed." And you, it must be so hard. Oh, you have no idea. The worst thing about it, right? Especially it's so when you have depressing. people like Carl Sutherland. You know him, like he's the guy that was on Fox yeah. that used to. Look, a lot of the, the times you're having sixteen year old kids come, come bag, up and audition on, on these shows, and mm. their their level of um. Like, ability to resist bullshit is nowhere near as strong as, let's say, someone that is a full-grown man like myself, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they get yeah. to, it's so, I, I've, I've seen 16-year-olds go up, right? They, they, you know, they have this, you know, they're really nervous, they go up, they, they spent their entire life devoting themselves to this thing, and someone like Cal says, look, you're, you're, you're crap, like, what you should be in a freaking karaoke bar. And they come out in tears, and it's so demoralizing, it, it's like... And they're a good singer, they're not yeah, bad. but mm. it's... It's tricky, but it's just the nature of the industry. You need to be able to withstand rejection. I mean, it's, you're, you're going to go through that kind of stuff. And yeah, I know, but it, it must but be. It's a, just so bad yeah. that you're actually you're a really good singer. Everyone around you, not, no, I'm talking about your mother. I'm talking about other people who go, he's got this, you've got that talent for this. And you, yeah. you know in your heart that you this is something you want to do for the rest of your life. And you've got some shitbag like Carl, who's never done anything in his life other than criticize everybody, mm. is turning around and he's judging you. On the, and you're as nervous as hell because I can imagine the yeah. nerves would be crazy yeah. and he's judging you and this guy's a shit bag well, who's never sung a song in his life I don't have a problem you're with that the, question. the whole, yeah. whole idea is I to judge it's face. just the way they do it sometimes yeah. sometimes they're actually doing it for ratings yeah. like, I'm not saying any of the X Factor judges now do it but I know yeah. I've actually met Kyle in the toilets this is when I did Idol like several years back yeah. and no, 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 no funny business not good. he's actually a really no 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 no, no, I didn't try to get any favors so I could get it. <laughs> he's like, he's like, hey, bro, you know what? Really yeah, no, you want to get out of the show, man. Um, well, I don't really like sucking, but you can suck my cock because I, you know, you want to tell you want some big black cock over here? So, okay, I just want to try chocolate. I'll give you a shot. No, no, seriously, he was he was a nice enough guy, right? But then you you actually meet him in the audition room, and he's actually looking for the most controversial stuff to say to you purely for ratings. Like, I honestly believe that. A lot of the stuff that he's saying, he's saying because he, he wants to, he's trying to make the show entertaining. I mean, it's all about yeah. ratings over here. Yeah. And yes, look, they have to judge you. They're going to, there's so many people auditioning for the show, they can't possibly say yes to everyone. They have to say no and be me. That's the nature of it. Like, the, the last time I did this, uh, just, you know, just on the weekend, I actually respected the way that um, Ronan dealt with me. Like, it was just like, look, you know, you know sing, your singing's good, your dancing's good, but it's not great. You've got to blow us away, mate. I'm sorry. Sorry, mate. But the last time was an absolute prick. But it's when they'll actually be mean to you in the way that they're saying no. Like, well, think of the – look, man, you shouldn't even be here. I've seen them say the most despicable stuff to contestants, and they leave the room not ever wanting to do this show ever again. There are many singing teachers that tell the, their students not to try out for the show because they've actually lost them from – from these people trying out for the show because they go and they audition for this show and then they, they get their heart broken they never even isn't, want to do this ever again. Isn't there this huge, like, I don't know, man. I, mean, I guess it's young kids, man. We're trying to, like, I look at, when I look at somebody 16 years old singing, man, it doesn't matter how talented they are. Yeah. Like, dude, I, I'm, when I, when I'm, when I listen to music, you know, I'm either looking for the sound, the melody, the, the music that's going to blow me away, or I'm looking for a story that I'm going to resonate with. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know what? I don't think there's anything a 16-year-old with a dream of being a pop star can tell me that I'm going to resonate with. But they're cute. They appeal to all the teeny buffers. I know. I guess I guess, I guess that, that that's that. You're talking about where, where singing was... about lost and tragic love. You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> I really don't know, like, who the People should just mm. learn not to give a shit what other people think. It, it and comes, I think, yeah. I think to a large extent, mm. you know, you are halfway at least towards learning that lesson because you know you see people go out and get traumatized by rejection in these shows, and you're like, well, whatever. When's the when's that next one? Mm -hmm. You know, 
You want you know, so I think if you, I think, I think if you climbed off the stage, mm-hmm. punch Sanderland, you managed to grab him by the neck and punch him in the face. You, you'd oh, get, yeah. you'd get ratings. Number one, number two, you'd be the talk of the town for a week. I'm surprised you wouldn't get a contract doing something. Bro, he had to have like security guards. Um, basically, he's had death threats because of his dickiness in his shows. I remember a few years back, uh, there were he, he got some death threat threats, and he had to take some precautions in order to uh, prevent himself from. Whoa, there are some people that really don't like the guy. And obviously he got kicked out of um, X Factor, I think, a few years back because of some stunny called on, on the radio. But that's besides the point. But you brought up a really interesting issue, which I kind of want to touch on, because I think a lot of people might benefit from this. And I heard some guys talking about it, this on their podcast, the Brian Callen Show. Is this a, a constant um, you know, a dude that's on the Joe Rogan experience? And he talks about why a lot of kids want to do something like that and why they, there is this tremendous need to be great as a kid. It, it, just as a young guy, not necessarily as a kid, like, I feel this right now. Like, I'm in this part of my life where I know it sounds a little arrogant, but you really want to matter. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's this unquenchable, unquenchable thirst in order to make a difference, to actually be something of significance. And you're, you're driven to, to really push yourself. And it, it's hard because even though there's so much shit that you have to endure, like going through these auditions and, you know, suffering uh, rejection, all this kind of stuff, you uh, did, did, you, did you find this at a, youth, at a youth, and do you still find it now? Like, you really want to be significant. You want to matter. And it's it's one of the, the difficulties when you're growing up. Like, you, you have this tremendous urge in order to make a difference in your life, and you, you really want to push yourself. I, 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 can't, I can't speak from your point of view because you're mm-hmm. going for that whole celebrity yeah. uh, singing thing, and that's, that's great. But mm-hmm. for me, I just wanted to be the best I could be at my job. I remember looking back now... When I, when I was going through my apprenticeship okay. and I was thirsting for information, I wanted to be the best. And you, ha- that, you have to go for that. You can't just be go, it's just a job. Because you'll never be any good. How you'll old were you when you, were, when you had this kind of mentality? Uh, probably 18, 19. 20, did, you know? did, you, did you want to like kind of be, be famous? Or no, I didn't. No, the famous anyway, thing didn't, yeah. never come into me because yeah, I was never, I was never, <laughs> oh, no, I was <laughs> never pushed for that. But, what, right. but in my job, as yeah. my trade, I wanted to be the best. And to get to be the best, you had to yeah, listen to your, the guys that were, you know, 40, 50 years old, older than you, that have been around a long time, so they knew their stuff inside out. You wanted to learn their tricks because every, mm-hmm. every industry has tricks. And if you know those tricks, that makes you, that makes it so yeah. much different. Why did you want to be the best, though? That's what I'm curious about. Well, what was driving you in order to reach that level? Because I, I, well, it's, it's a bit hard to think think back now. It's come down to women? Because I know you kind of lost interest after... after maybe no, it's, nothing to do with, it's nothing to do with women. Of now, course, whole, it's everything to do with women, man. I'm like, freaking out. No, no, no. You, Not everything, you, but just a, a huge part well, of it. When you leave school, yeah. you've, you've gone to school your whole life, right? Well, right. you've gone to school. I went up to school, and I, and I finished my school, and I started my apprenticeship, and then I, I started working, and I, it's a whole different thing when you're working from school. I mean, this is hands-on, practical. And, and and you really want to be good at what you do. You don't want to be you don't want to be shit. You don't want people to go, oh that guy, he's you know he's a shit he's a shit trader. He's yeah. a shit shit his thing. So yeah, if you know yeah. all the tricks, you know the skills, and you and you can apply that right mm-hmm. straight away, be the best you can be. That's what you're striving for. Uh, that's what be I was best. striving for. That's without a doubt. It's not healthier. to be. Maybe you're just more to... mature than a lot of people. I'll, I'll, um, I'll tell you, like my there's no celebrity yeah. plumbers. I'll tell you right no, now. It's not necessarily a celebrity thing. That's what I want to make very clear. It's this. Just so I, I articulate myself perfectly, and I don't get misquoted. Like, oh, he's a freaking narcissistic Christian man. Shouldn't freaking want to be a star. No, it's just a need to prove yourself. Do I actually be significant to make a difference? There's this is tremendous drive. You you don't want to be a freaking stuff up, and you. You, you right. want to, you want to, yeah, but can I, let me, yeah. let me, one minute, can yeah. I just ask you one question, just one little question? You don't have that now. It's different. Like, I totally do, mm-hmm. but I would describe it in a different way, which is kind of why I'm anxious to, to like, have a go at it, but, okay. Chris, you had a no, question. No, no, just, just, just go back on when you started, you said you were doing software IT. Yeah. How old were you then? Oh, you know, 18, 19. Did you still want to be, when you started Absolutely. that off, you beyond wanted to be the best? No, beyond uh, everything else, I wanted to be a freaking star, man. That was the number one no, thing. No, 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 no. But, I mean, when you were doing that... No. I, it wasn't a case... Well, why did you pick be, that? Why did you pick that job? Because it was... Look, part of me still wanted... I love the idea of creating. I mean, part yeah, of it yeah. is just being able to express yourself as an artist to uh, express yourself yeah. through creative work. And I, that's what I thought programming was like. Making computer games. I love the idea of creating worlds, that kind of thing. Yeah. But part, the most... The biggest... Were you good at it, though? I was yeah, I was good at it. In but to be school. good at it, you must you, ha- you must have something there. You mu- you know you want to. It was passion. we all have many interests, but the, the 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 biggest, the strongest interest I had was um yeah actually singing, performing, that kind of thing. The idea of being being out there doing something that I love doing, being able to influence people in a positive way and gaining recognition from what you're doing. Oh fair enough. I mean let's be honest over here. The uh, living a life. I mean there is no artistic work in the history of mankind that 
um, the artist doesn't want to get some kind of credit for. Like he do, artists don't create portraits with, with, without signing their name. They want to receive some kind of acknowledgement for it because we want to be recognized. And I think particularly when you're growing up, I don't know if this changes. I know that I've experienced this. I still experience this now. But apparently as you get older, it kind of it's not the same thing. You become wise and you realize it's not all about you. But there, I've heard so many people talk about how there's this, particularly in the performing well, world, there is this tremendous void within yourself, and you want to you want to matter, you want to be significant, and call that narcissistic, call it what you will, but I would be dishonest if I told you that it's not there, and part of the drive, yes, you want to have a benef beneficent effect on the world, but you want to, you don't want to be a nobody, you want to actually do something I'll, great. I'll, I'll, I will, I just want to be a dictator. You, know, you just want to be a dictator. I'll, 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 I'll kind of elaborate, <laughs> like, in the, first, in the first much of my life, I could totally, well, I don't know, man, my dad, this was, this will explain much of it, right? Mm -hmm. Um... My dad was was a dictator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was a soccer professional at 18. He, he had his dad was a colonel in the military. He actually got yeah. paid more than his dad. And this is back in the freaking whatever the fuck 60s. What was his name? My dad. Yeah. Emi Dedic. Emi Dedic. I thought I had a dicta yeah. dictatorial yeah, kind yeah, of name. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's right. The, uh, he yeah. would do as I see. Here's Gosh, the. Obvious. Here's yeah. the. It's all coming. He then he then his parents kind of forced him to quit that so he can go to university. He goes to university and he studies engineering. He spends eight years studying a four-year degree. In the meantime, he becomes a professional table tennis player. He hadn't played before that, and so and then of course he, he you know gets married and goes to work. And he the, 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 even though the table tennis he got into top ten in the country, like that doesn't work. Right? And so he's got this thing. I'm going to top create. ten in the country. That's yeah. that's I, not. I that's love a, a guy. Who, but, I love a guy who goes through life right and he just excels. Whatever he does, I'm, I'll just do this. And then he's like top ten, and he I'll go. And, I I'll don't. Go and do that. Off, man. It's so freaking easy for him. It's like no, freaking. You know it's, John, easy, it's like John Jones dominating the USC no, flag. If it's easy up, so you, no, well, it's easy in the sense that people need to go through failure. If people Listen. get to the top too fast, it's can like. Oh, oh, so you would yeah. turn around tomorrow and go, oh, you you, you win American Idol, you're up there, you <laughs> no, 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 make no, a Oh, no, I did it all, easy. All, all, all I'm saying, man, is that it just seems like too easy if someone that does something and wins all the time, they do don't have what, any hardship. Do you, know what, do you know what I hate about someone who, does, who goes through that, where he, no matter what he hits, he just seems to get up like top? Can I? It's when it's when he when he, when he he pisses it away, yeah, hits no, it off no, the no. hole, or, or he just yeah. throws it all in the bin. That yeah. shits me. Cause it you, does as well. But let me elaborate. Like, let me continue here. I'm talking oh, about I'm sorry, my dad. Man. Like, sorry, inject. See, my dad wasn't one of those guys. Mind you, he was. He is exceedingly talented. But they, his whole, it's all up in here for him. Like, he is, he's a pit bull terrier. He is the most determined person, I like I've ever met. And and for him, this type of like giving up is is. None it is worse system. than killing your own mother. Like starting a job and not finishing it, I or that. like it to him, that's like the worst thing he could ever do. And like my mom talks about, like, oh, you know, well, what made you do it? I thought it, my dad would do this. Oh, he did something lovely. Well, what did your mom say? Like, what made but, you pursue me? Yeah, or? what made him? She's like, oh, you know, like I thought if he fought so hard to win a game of table tennis, you know, I imagine, like, what what, what would he do for a woman he loves? And, uh, oh, that's, that's you really know? Cool, yeah. and I give up so easily with women, man. Like, I'll make one play at them and be like, I don't like you much. Like, I don't care. No, I was just playing out the game. Come back. No, fuck that. <laughs> it's uh, me, man. But, but <laughs> long, like, long story short, here's this man that got to the uh, close to the pinnacle of two sports and didn't it didn't carry through for like, legitimate obligations like university, like right. marriage and kids and and he's, he's, he's going, I'm going to raise a champion. And version one, my sister. My sister was my sister was in the team to go to the Lillehammer Olympics at the age of 17 for skiing. She was the national champion five times over. When, when she started, yeah, she was favorite. clumsy as fuck. They were like, why are you doing to this poor girl? What, what, what? You could see that she's not an athlete. Like, what are you doing? Nah, nah, nah. It was that it's up in here. And, you know. To some extent, you know, my sister is, and she wound up quitting skiing and not going to the Olympics because she wasn't getting adequate training and she didn't think she could compete fairly and, you know, she just basically finished in the bottom 10%. And that's not what she wanted to do. She went into education, so she did like a freaking, wound up doing PhD in biochemistry and now she's a medical doctor. So kind of a high achiever, but she's a bit too single-minded and if things don't, things don't exist that's other than her achieving goals. So I was raised that way. You know, and even with school and exams, I mean, even as I was kicking ass at tennis, I didn't have 
I was living for tennis. I didn't have much time for school. But every once in a while, like literally like three times a year, I would play. Was pushing you there? Yeah, yeah. Big oh, time. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Like, to be honest, my dad, I played tennis for a year and a half without my dad caring. And after about a year and a half, he's like, okay, okay, I see that this is what you really want. Started really now, training. now, okay, I'm getting you training. We're I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna was mentally. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. he taking care of training you, or was he getting someone? Was he was he getting going? other people, but he was always there. He was always watching. We, were, we yeah. had arguments, you know, like he, he, he had strategies and stuff. He, you know, he's saying I should jog more. I was jogging at like 6 a.m. in the morning. I was yeah. playing. It was, it was pretty serious. It's so even an endurance if, like, sport, isn't it? It's would you, how, it much mental it, how much of it is more. mental? How much of it is physical? How much tennis of it is 90% skill? mental? Yeah, 90% mental. Um. Because, I mean, really, even the physical part, uh, anybody can be physically prepared to play tennis if they're willing to put in the hours. Well, you can say that about anything. The mind no, no, controls no. the body. No, what I'm saying you can't is be a sprinter with, on pure will, but you can be a tennis player. You can't. Bro, 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 bro. No, 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 no you can't. Okay, nah. okay, 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 bro, okay. I'm not saying you can, ma- maybe if you were 40 years old, it's starting with that. If you were an Oompa Loompa, okay, I would, a Wizard no. of Oz, you're not going to be a sprinter. All right, I would have, I would have agreed with you maybe 10 years ago. I have the same argument with this um, psychologist, and like I, he was talking about how how much um, you know your psychology plays in your physical uh, prowess and all that kind of stuff. And look, are you telling me that look if you don't work hard at something like, for instance, if you were you're born with a bad genetics, that if every single day you if you're working your ass off training, that that's not going to allow you to maintain. Here's what I'm telling this you. It's amazing prowess. Here's here's what I'm telling you. Okay. What are you telling me? Ninety five percent of sports. Yes. If you have the mindset, you could get to the very top. Ninety five percent. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Happens to be one of the five percent. That's all I'm saying. You I've uh, seen I've seen the final four on the for, sorry, final eight in the world championship. There like either the question is, is it seven black guys or is it yeah. eight black guys? Well, look, I mean and for you to say it like not, it's been done. I remember look I there was one Greek guy in 1982. I can't remember what year it was. Maybe it was either 82 or I think it was 1982 actually or 81. Mm. I remember seeing this Scottish sprinter winning the uh, either the World Championship or or the Olympics uh, 100 meters, and I'm like, yeah. what the frick? There you go, mentality. Mentality. But, there you like, go. You're gonna be physically. Dude, you're like, gonna be you're physically built. To, you're not going to disagree with me. It's predominantly. Oh, of that course, sport it's is predominantly. predominantly but t- t- never say never. Now, man. tennis is predominantly Justin mental. Bieber, yo. <laughs> oh, tennis is Bieber, predominantly mental. Movies. Now, let me continue along this tangent. Well, sorry, along my freaking arc that I was going to compare my life story. So, no, it was always about I. I want it more than everyone else. I'm going to be the best, and I'm going to even if I don't have time to be the best at this school thing. I was like, a couple of times a year, I'd be this test. Yeah. I'm going to be the best. I, I'd, I'd like I would. Like the king of the class, declare in front of the whole class that I'm going to get the best grade. And like half the time, I actually got it. So even though I was like fifth or sixth in class, I had to do my grandstanding thing. Yeah. Like I'm the smartest person. I don't person. do that. I'm the smartest person. So yeah, th- this notion that I matter and I'm going to... Yeah, it's you psychological. Know, I, I get it. But yeah. let, let, me, let me elaborate. Let me, let me continue here. Let me continue here. I, this sort of mega competitive tennis thing ended for me at about age 18, 19. And then that was uni. And Why did it end for you? Well, long story short, uh, it takes about a hundred grand to essentially play enough tournaments so you can have a crack at making professional. Can't you get sponsorship? Sure, there was. Essentially, mentality. Yo. It's no, all about no, the mentality. No, no, no. I'm sorry, it, man. It is, sure, if you got, if you did a lot of the fundraising, dude, I'm sure you could have done it for a. Look, long story short. Okay. I. Uh, I broke my ankle in. I think it was 2000 end of 2002 the start of 2003 I was at uni I was training with a bunch mm-hmm. of kids and to be honest I was 18 and I was the same level as the best Aussie kids who were 16 but these best Aussie kids who were 16 didn't make it oh probably. this was in Australia for yeah, some reason yeah. I thought this was in like uh, no 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 like, or something like that no 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 I was uh, I played in you know I lost a bunch of years in Libya because that's where I graduated out of high school and there was literally one person Libya. in the country that could, yeah there was only one person in the country that could beat me so I wasn't getting and that was Gaddafi yeah <laughs> and you know beat Gaddafi <laughs> And this kid, like, was out of the country half the year, and the other half didn't want to play me because he was afraid to lose because, you know, it was a matter of prestige to him. And so if you don't get to play Isn't against it? people... You know pictures of you, you know, back in these days? Would have, I, I probably I could dig up a couple. Out, I could dig up a couple. Look sexy with those, like, tight tennis shorts of yours. But, um, now we're very baggy shorts all my life. But, okay. t- too bad, too bad for your viewing. But look, long story short, it was literally, it got to the point where it was exceedingly unrealistic and financially impossible. 
So, years go on, and I finish uni, I basically party and drink a lot, and I pass somehow, and then I become like a 9 to 5 drone for a couple of years, and I spend more time thinking. Mm -hmm. And sometime around 2009, 10, uh, yeah. I start contemplating life a bit more. It's a bit like your podcast, you know, I start thinking, well, why do I do this? Why did I do this uni? Why am I here? Why am I at this fucking job? Who's making the money here? What's the scam? And bottom line is I start thinking for myself. And at that mm -hmm. point... Can I just ask you, did you have any regrets about the tennis career? Maybe wish you to be honest? Spend a bit more time focusing on that? Um... I didn't have too many regrets. I mean, oh, that's a good thing because that's the worst thing. I had regrets. I had regrets for the first couple of years after, and now I think I'm kind of blessed because if honestly, even if I had made it, man, you know, unless you're in the top twenty, mm -hmm. you're not gonna retire with a couple of million. You're gonna retire with fuck all money. I mean, I know well, many guys. Was it that about were, the money to you? What was it about? No, it wasn't about the money. It was that about was, love of competition. It's, it's I know the guys. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's about. It's about, I mean, you know, when you're compulsively competitive, it, it's not really about any grand. It's fame, you, you imagine yourself, you like being recognized, you enjoy that. But it's not even that, it's that you're hyper competitive, you like, well, that, you like that dog fight. You like, you, you like it when it's close even more. I would go nuts at people when I used to play against them when they gave up. Oh, really? Yeah. Like when they gave up? Yeah. yeah, that's depressing when they gave up. Why? Yeah. Because You're serious? I'd be like, I'm loving when I'm playing Call of Duty and someone's like, I'm not playing you anymore. I'm like, ah! ah! No, I'm the opposite. Because <laughs> I would be like, what the fuck, man? Like, dude. It's, it's like you broke in the spirit, bro. It's, it's, it's three one. one. No, it's the yeah. opposite. I find that the opposite, too. How the hell is it the... It's a competition you're trying to win, no matter how you win. Yeah, but no one wants to play a game that's the easy. Stronger, the stronger your opponent, the more you enjoy it. That's, that's a healthy attitude I'm but, telling you, man. If your objective is to actually win, you should try to win, regardless of how... No, they, no. It's, 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 no, it's, no, no, no. You know what they say? It's not the win, it's, the, it's how the game's Chris, playing. Chris, I'll be Chris, honest. I'll, 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 I'll elaborate to them. All right. In tournament matches, yeah. when somebody gives up against you, yeah, it feels good. I didn't, never fucking... Well, that, that's, what I mean. that's what I meant. But in practice matches, yeah. when I just play people, all right, let's meet up on Saturday and we'll have a match... And I start leading, and they just start playing like shit. I, I would that. go off at them. That's and because just say, one, you're trying to improve yourself. The other, you're trying to win. When you're yeah. trying to win, you don't care so much about yeah. whether or not you had a great match, so to speak. Mm. Unless, of course, you're the real kind of like your Goku. I don't mm. know if you watch some anime cartoons. And Goku's this kind of person that always wants to challenge. So when he's whenever he's going up against someone that's more powerful than him, he's like, "Yes, this guy is so much more powerful than me. I love a challenge." And all his friends are saying, "No, no, he'll destroy you. He'll destroy the entire, the entire world. You can't, right. can't fight him, Goku." Right. And Goku's like, yes, but he's so much more powerful, I need to fight him, so I can improve. Yeah. And you kind of have that mentality yeah, but, but, when you train. Let me, let me, but yeah. isn't that the same? Isn't that the same where you're going to? Because you just said when you're in Libya, mm. there was no one that you could play against, right? Yeah. So if you're playing against people that you know that you're much better than, it gets depressing. It does. You want someone to... to yeah. What do they say when you go to a teacher? A teacher can only teach you as good as what he, can, what yeah. he is, right? Yeah. For you to go past him, you've either got to teach yourself or you got to move on to another teacher. The, yeah. But let me That's the let me let me let me let me, let me kind of elaborate now mm -hmm. as my views kind of diverge from yours because I'm thinking back then I thought oh I could have had all of this but now I'm thinking okay look if I, just imagine I'm still there and trying to win the next tennis match you know the, the world is an amazing beautiful complex place with a thousand life life baths you could take and one where I'm out there just playing tennis matches for 15 years, 16 years of my life, mm. with that being the only focus, I would have felt like that would have been a waste of time. That's a good point there. Now, when it starts to change, I was sort of describing starting to think for myself, and, and then you start to define success for yourself. Whereas before success used to be, you know, win a big tennis tournament, you know, get into, say, it was that list that they keep of, of top 100. Now, all of a sudden... Then success became, well, like, get that next promotion and have a better... And all of it, when you realize that that's bullshit... I've just been the now, only guy in the friggin' world that never goes for... Now, never goes for friggin' uh, now it, it, celebrity status. It that's is. because you have a healthy let mind, me, my friend. You're not narcissistic like all the performers me, uh, out there. They have this void in themselves, my friend. That's I, the healthiest I, I, attitude to have. You no, people love interrupting. Like Sorry, oh, man. You oh, right, people right, love oh, yeah, interrupting. Right. I'm being terrible. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm saying... I'm trying to say, like, how I evolved from purely wanting to attain goals that society sets, mm -hmm. being very egoistical and wanting to attain goals... When was this, Sonny? When was this? What, how, up how until maybe three years ago. Oh, okay. And till today, still being very egoistical, mm. but defining success for myself. 
And see, when I say, what, what is my definition of success? Do something that has a tangible difference in the world. Now, it doesn't matter whether a million people know my name or not. It really makes, I swear to God, that, that makes very little difference to well, me. It, but it if, does make a difference, man. You, you get more pussy for starters. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how old are you again? Sarah, I forgot how old you are. Come on, man. Are you 16? Gotta, like, are you stuck in a 16 year old body? You gotta, keep, you gotta keep it real, man. You gotta keep it real. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> that, the pussy comment. The pussy comment is probably right. Like, I never yeah, had to be that, that, That's that. a pretty good one. <laughs> no, 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 let me. Let me. Uh, Assuming let me Freud said like, that man has two drives. One is to be great, and the other is to find a mate. And I find that. You could basically bring it all to that desire. I mean, the whole desire of being great is so that you can get more mates, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, there, all I'm saying is, definitely in a young age, a huge percent, percentage of you wanting to succeed is so that you can you can hook up. I mean, I think if guys truly look down, look deep down as to the underlying motivation for a lot of the stuff that they do, it is because they want more chicks. And I know that sounds incredibly shallow, but it is true. Can I say, like, I actually yeah. fight this. I, I look at it and I go, you know, if I went salsa dancing, I'd get laid more. But then I go like, what the fuck? I don't give a shit about salsa dancing. Yeah. Do I do it just to get uh. laid more? You know? And then I'm thinking to myself, like, if I do the things I want, then I'm going to get me laid in the mirror. In you got to do what sure. you got to do. Oh, but do at the end of the day, do. at the end of the day, like, I think to myself, wait a second. If I do what I do, it'll take longer. But at the point where I freaking excel at it, you know? If I'm the guy that invented something cool, now the chicks don't have to have heard of that ever. If I'm the guy that has no need for a freaking job, lives in a comfortable house, and nothing kind of luxurious, is, you know, in terms of general understanding what goes on, has, has this kind of cool, calm, you know, self-assured manner and all the free time in the world and doesn't give a shit and isn't impressed by anybody, like, that in itself has got an element of sexiness that I think women respond to. I found it, I found in my life that the, only, the situations where I'm socially really, really comfortable in, whatever girls come along, they, they come my way, but, you know, the, the, unfortunately, the association I'm really, really comfortable with, and I'm not all that full of chicks, so... Well, yeah, I, can, I, can, a, I, can I, can I, you both had a go, and, I, and I, I've just thought of something that's mm-hmm. happened to me, and when you talk about girls and getting girls and things, when I was <laughs> young, I was uh, 20, 22, no, 22 old, years old, right? My, I, well, 18, go to pubs, start going to nightclubs, right? And I watched all my mates and my brother's mates who I'd hung out with, mm. all drinking, having a great time, all the women on the dance floor, no blokes dancing. And I went, why is everyone dancing? Dance because I didn't know how to sure. dance. Mm-hmm. And I went, you know what? Fuck, that's not hard. I could do that. And I saw one guy get up there, right? And he was doing the whole disco thing. And he had this white suit on. And he was smoking it. I mean, this guy had it down pat. And the fucking women were flocking on him, right? And I went, all right, that's so I need to get a hot chick. Just learn how to dance. That's so great, I learned, and I learned, and I learned. I practiced a lot when I was younger. You got some moves left to dance. No, I had, I had really good moves, and uh, oh, I'm, my songs I like are probably not the songs. But as long as it's got a good beat, if it's got a really good beat, I can dance to it. So we go, we go out, we party, party, party. And I actually got one venue down in Melbourne one night. I was hanging around with a group of guys who went to RMIT dance school, and they rang me up and said, "Chris, you coming out tonight?" I went, "Oh no, no." He goes, "How about if we come out and you get paid to dance?" And I go, what do I have to do? You just got to dance on stage. I said, fucking do that easy. So I went down and got paid for it. Couldn't believe I got, paid, paid. got crazy, paid to man. dance. Anyway, had a really good night, blah, blah, blah. But I've always loved dancing. But initially it was to get the chicks, right? Yeah. And after I could dance, like, we'd hit the floor. My brother, we'd be standing there having a drink. My brother would go, fucking dance quick. There's a hot chick up there. Because I knew straight away, you get up there, you do your yeah, moves. Straight, man. Bang, you get a girl. That. So, so I, can, <laughs> I can relate to that to an extent. Yeah. But after a while... I think I think the whole thing about picking up a girl is a confidence thing, right? Yeah. You walk into a place, say you've had a really bad day, right, and mm-hmm. you feel shit. You don't even have to – I think it's just like an aura around you. Everyone knows. And when you're desperate and you've been a while and, you're hanging, out, and you're hanging out, like that it's been a so while, true. you walk into a joint, right, you, 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 people can see it. You don't even have to say one word. People go, he's desperate, right? But you walk in there. Women see it. Now, my wife, my wife doesn't watch this podcast, so I don't that, have yeah. to worry. But here's the other one. Let's just say you just <laughs> you just had sex with a bird before you went out, right? You yeah. had sex with a bird, right? You're yeah. relaxed. You're confident. You just seem to be on the top here, of your game, right? You walk into a joint. You're not even looking, right? Because you've just, you've just got laid. Hey, 
You walk into a joint and you can't figure out why women are looking at you because you're nothing much to look at. You're not, yeah. you're not gorgeous, but yeah. you walk in there and I'm not bullshitting you. That's, agree, happened, yeah. that's happened a few times in my life where there's just not a care in the world. Yeah. And I think a lot of guys who are married, who go out, they dress up, they go out and have a good night. They get a lot of chicks hitting on them. Why? Because they're not desperate. They don't even show it. I don't care. You know, if I pick up, Great. Some guys yeah. do. If I don't, I don't give a fuck. And the yeah. women see it. That's right. I've, it's, it's I, so, I've told I you the story. Every guy can relate like, to this I've, thing I've of truism, you, yeah. I've told, you, I've told him the story, but mm. like once I had an ex, she shagged me like twice before me going out. <laughs> so, she, so he wouldn't pick yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, the thing that's is... terrible. I get to this bar, and I'm honestly not wanting to go out. Yeah. Because well, you can imagine I'm already freaking drained, you know? <laughs> And I'm there with these people, and I go to this freaking, it's the, what's the name of the club? Uh, Burrock, Burrock House in the city. And yeah. I'm standing at the bar, literally I just arrived, and I'm just getting a drink, and just, yeah, whatever, man, just doing it. The girl comes, and she was hot. She was drunk, she I literally you, grabs me by the dick. Literally. Now, literally. The only time it's happened to me in Australia, it's happened overseas, but I've never had that happen to me in this country. Okay. Now, I don't want to elaborate. I don't want to elaborate. In too many when, details. This is when you didn't want it. This is I totally was like, nah, man. Oh, God. No chicks today. But come Just, on. I've had enough. But you must have but you must have been in a situation where you've got, when you're on the top of your game, yeah. you, know, you know when you're like, you're brimming? Like you're yeah. really happy. Like you might have had a really good day. You had a really good sing. Whatever you did, right? Absolutely. And you're absolutely gunning. And you're walking down the street and you just, there's not a care. You just got this. You, there's, a, there's no or smile on your people, face. Yeah. There's no smile on your face, but you're smiling on the inside, right? People can see And that, yeah. people, even guys can go, fuck, is he all I he's know. doing I, all I, right. I don't want to go on metaphysical on you, but I think people can, it, you're giving off some, whether or not it's a pheromone, whether or not it's just your simple like vibrance of vitality, People definitely do sense that. Well, I mean, language, say, yeah, absolutely. That with. has a lot to do with it. You can explain it on a very logical level. And I've had this happen to me at a gay club, right? Don't look. Don't get the wrong idea. One of my friends, she forced me to this club's birthday party. I really want to go with her, and I, I eventually agreed to go to the. I think it's a pier on the Smith Street or something like that. And I'm like, I, you know, I was minding my own business. Certainly didn't want to, you know, do anything with anyone. And everything was cool, right? I seriously did not want to have any attention about any guy, obviously. <laughs> but then I started dancing. They were right? sexy. Oh, oh, no. Everything they was fucking cool. <laughs> until I started dancing, I get up on the dance floor. Uh, you didn't shit. want any and attention <laughs> no, no, no. from anybody. No, bro, but bro. then you started bro, dancing bro, in a bro, gay it's club. Dude, it's, 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 <laughs> it's a black thing. Wait, 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 you misunderstand. It's a new <laughs> I hear music and I gotta stop. I gotta stop talking that music. Oh, here stop. we go. It's kinda like, I some know why people guy went in. Some big bald white guy's going, I like the way he pops. Yeah, bro, look, it was, it was involuntary. You know, I just <laughs> hear this music. Oh, uh, my favorite star, whoa, well, yeah! And then, I, I can't, it was, it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen, like, you know, a few seconds later, a whole row of guys just start popping on the dance floor and then doing this whole thing, which I, I would do at other clubs with girls, right? Like, you're not trying to, you. no, not well, not not to begin with, not trying to like get too close to them. They're kind of slowly like you know, you know, edging up to them, kind of stuff like you know, getting closer to you, and I'm like, what the frack is going on? And Olivia, my my this girl that you know happened to be there at the time, she's with me, and I'm like, I must be must be Luke. Oh shit, I'm in a gay joint, and they're all coming up to me, and I'm like, what the? Fr and there's this one guy that wouldn't back up. He's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, and I'm like, hey man, um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm can not. I, can I tell you something? No, the weird, I, I just have to finish the story right now. I actually completely appreciated how girls get really annoyed when you're hitting on them after this because I told this guy <laughs> straight up that I was not, look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gay. And I'm like, yeah, neither am I. Neither am I. Neither am I, but let's get that close off. Come on, come on. Every, everyone's like, seriously, if, if a guy, like, this, later on in the conversation after I started talking to this guy, I, I made it clear I wasn't gay. Um, he, he started saying these really weird things like, yeah, but man, come on, like, wouldn't, if you know, like, if a guy was gonna suck your cock, you wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I, I would not like that, man. And he was like, come on, really, really? And I'm like, yeah, really? He's like, come on, man. And like, he's, he's, he's flirting with him, like, what the fuck? Hey, bro, bro, no, I'm out of here. He's like, come on, just stay a little. And the guy takes my hand, right, and he starts kissing me. I'm like, ah, ah, look at that. And I'm like, Olivia, I've had it. I'm, I'm out of here. Come on, Chris. No, no, Olivia, I'm out of here. And the guy's like, oh, come on, just stay. No. And I completely understood from that point and how annoying wait, it would be wait, when wait, someone... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know where you think that's special. My wife's a hairdresser, right? <laughs> All right. So every time we go to a hairdressing thing, we're going to Sydney next week, in a couple of weeks, up to Sydney. Okay. And we go to these hairdressing conferences, right, where they talk about cutting. And 90% of the guys there are Ben as a stick, right? And they have this big after party. 
and then they go to a nightclub. And we go because there's tons of women, tons of blokes. But you go there, and I'll tell you what, if you don't get hit on three times, <laughs> can I buy you a drink? Yeah, you can buy me and my missus a drink and my friend. Uh, oh, oh, you win. Oh, all right then. Oh, <laughs> Man, God. if you don't get hit on in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a gay nightclub, I'll, you know. You know, if then I just right wish, up. I just wish that women were so easy to pick up. Yeah. It's like gay men Dude, pick up other gay men. Dude, I'll tell you, I'll it's tell so you, easy. I'll tell you my, yeah. I'll tell you my funny. You met, you met mom and like basically there was some fucking thing. Some chick again, chick takes you to a gay nightclub, and like you, I knew how to sit in the freaking corner with the wall against my back. Fuck. Not dancing and bopping, were you? Not dancing, not <laughs> bopping, none of that shit. I was just buying a drink. I had my hands in my pockets. However, my mate Mohammed went to the toilet and somebody groped him in the ass. Oh, and that's him. It. Wait, what? We groped him. Groped him, like grabbed his butt, oh, and gotcha. he initially turned to punch the guy, and then he decided he'd be gentle, so he just like knocked, knocked, knocked the feet from under him, like with with some ninja kick. And <laughs> okay. then he was like apologized and went back to the bar. And next thing you know, there's this fat lesbian chick trying to beat up my friend. <laughs> oh God! And I'm trying to and, like. I don't even know, man. We got out of that somehow. There, there was called Cube, and <laughs> this fat chick was too fat to get up because th- there are these boxes in the wall. So think of a wall, and there's yeah. cubes in the wall about a meter and a half up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you kind of got to jump up and climb into the cube, and the cube is nicely cushioned. Okay. So there's like a – it is fucking like – it's as a concept for a nightclub, it's fucking awesome because oh. people from underneath can't see what's happening in the back of the box. So they get onto their willy nillies in the in the boxes. You you get the picture. Willy nilly. So Explain that. Floor, is that a Serbian term? <laughs> What's going on? Dance floor about a meter and a half above dance floor boxes. Oh, very good. And they're cushioned. We'll anyway, we run we run off. We push him into one of the cubes, and the fat chick can't climb into the box, and uh, you know he's safe. And later that night, man, I'm at the bar and I hook up with a chick. Uh, at a gay club. At a gay club. How the hell does that work? I don't know. Maybe I, I, I need to reconsider going. I think. I think. Dude, yeah, bro, you no, sure? No, 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 you no. sure? She had her arm junk. Hear me out. 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 I think. I think the chick saw what happened. Like with me and my friend, found it funny and pretty entertaining, and started talking to me. And like, oh man, what's the drama for you tonight? I'm like, oh man. I hope that's about it. But nonetheless, I remember. I was pretty drunk, but I remember a scene upstairs. She went out for a ciggy, and I'm sitting on the fucking bleachers with her, man. We're making out, and it, I'm just going, fuck, man, who would have thought? Gay club, I scared a chick. And then there's this other, I don't know, lesbian chick or something, just grabs her out of my arms and drags her away. And it was like the most bizarre of all experiences. It was, it was actually the lesbian chicks that ruined my night. And the gays, Those lesbians. And the gays didn't touch me, man. That was that was my experience. Uh, uh, I find it, it's not I hard. Thought. It's not hard to meet, even if you don't want to meet blokes. <laughs> pick up blokes <laughs> at a freaking blokes gay have blokes. the same mentality as blokes. And let's face it, that's, that's right. Want to hook up. That's why I. There's it's a, so easy. I, I found this Wish app was that easy. a while ago. One of my friends was like, "Hey, man, you should check out this app called Blender." Right? It's like you know, like with, you know, girls and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, cool, we'll check it out. Turns out there's another app right with a very very similar name. It's for gay guys. And I downloaded this thing, right? It's for yeah, it turns Blender? Out, like Blender. What? It's called Blender. It's some app on the uh, on the iPhone, and you, you download. But there's another app What's called Blend, a- Blender with a slightly different spe- spelling. It's B L E N D R without an E. And uh, basically, you put videos of yourself on this app, right? And I just I realized that there are no girls on this thing. They're just guys. <laughs> and you put your and video. No, 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 this is. I didn't realize. I created my profile, oh. Oh. and I'm like, what a video? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't but I, re- I actually started viewing through the profiles once I set, I set my own profile. There are all these g- guys, you know, like looking all kind of sexy and stuff like that with videos of themselves. And apparently, it's ridiculously. I I went, you know, I, I went to uh, I went to the website. Apparently, it's pretty damn popular, and it's ridiculous easy, ridiculously easy for guys to find any guy in the area and and, and bang. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, I think you just want to be gay that's following not fucking, your music. No. That's not cool. There no, must be, there must to be persecuted. A religious cult and goes, I didn't read the bit about religious cult. <laughs> <laughs> I just sort of just put my profile up. And I was just amazed how many profiles there were and stuff like that. But it, look, it's always it's always been a case, man, like oh. with, with a guy trying to hook up with another guy. It's I know that 
in the gay community, it's ridiculously easy. It's, I mean, they, it's oh, look, cool. pop Come culture. On. Aren't they meant to be yeah. like? Aren't they meant to be persecuted? What? And under, you know. I was gonna say, killed a nightclub. This guy was like, he looks like, like Eddie a... Munster, and he says to me, "It's got boy on his jacket, got uh, uh, you yeah, know, lace yeah. on his top. And it's got big belt buckle that says boy." And he goes, "How you going?" I go, "Good." <laughs> he goes, "He goes, oh yeah." Uh... He's looking me up and down. I go, "I can tell you're a boy." <laughs> He's got oh. this full on white makeup. Looks like the cure I'm going. Oh, yeah, great. There's something incredibly weird about a guy picking you up because it makes you empathize with what it's like for when you're hitting on girls that don't actually appreciate you hitting on them. And it makes you go, oh, I see why you don't like it. I've never been able to fully understand that. But see, that's that. what yeah. I never understand mm. with women, right? When you do yeah. when you do go to pick them up, you find them attractive and you're walking up to it and you've got to, you've got to say something, right? You want to yeah. get the conversation going or you want to chat. Now, okay, two minutes in, she says, you know, I'm not really interested. I'm just here with my friends. Fine. Walk away. Fine. But some women are just total bitches. That's but whether, when you go overseas, like when I was in the US, where, yeah. the, where the ratio is a bit mm. different, you go meet up a girl. It's not, it's not this instant rejection bullshit. Yeah. They weigh you up, they give you a chance, blah, blah, blah. Here they just fucking bang you straight away. Yeah, well, it's how you do it. I mean, if you're like, uh, uh, like, leave me alone. Like, what are you talking to me? That's obviously not cool. But I just realized that even if a guy hit on me and was, uh, was, was nice about it, I still probably and wouldn't be cool with that. I don't go kissing his like, knuckles. No, I'd, I'd be like, ah! I, I just, I, I, I don't want to sound like a homophobe, but I just, I'm just not comfortable with it, you know what I mean? Well, my mate, my mate reckons I should just say I, a few drinks, I might change my mind and let the guy buy you like uh, forty bucks worth sorry. of car, and you, and you go, no, nah, I think it's time to go. I'm out, out of the taxi. <laughs> you can get the hell out. Oh god, sorry, I didn't change my mind. No, I didn't how, change my how mind. So off topic. I thought this was going to be an intellectual conversation <laughs> about technology, myths, and reality, but we're talking about freaking gays and having uh, sex and talking. No, it's the lounge. We can talk about whatever we want. Damn straight. This is this is the, uh, the informal kind of setting. I'm, but it was like, to. you know, it was a very, to be honest, I don't know if you talked about much of this pop stuff, you know, on your own podcast, because I've probably only seen not, like seven or eight episodes. I haven't, because I've tried to, look, I've tried to keep them along the intellectual kind of side, mm. but um, yeah, maybe... Um, I think it's really interesting, because, we, yeah. you know, we understand that TV's like that, you know, it, some people, no matter how hard you try, if you just don't have that look... Mm. Or you don't have that personality like that mm. idiot uh, we were talking, Carl Sandelan before. I mean, this guy's yeah. got nothing going for him physically, but he's got that whole real bastard attitude towards everything, which is only yeah. going to get him into trouble, but that's mm. what gets him in there. And, and like you said, he's out in the back thinking, I've got to say something controversial. That's you right. know, we're going to get ratings. That's what it's all about. Now, the guy could be totally different in reality. I'm not that I believe it because, you know, if he's going to – there's a certain limit to everyone, especially yeah. as you get old. When you're younger, you'll say anything. But when you get to a certain limit when you get older, you go – this is the boundary. I'm not going mm. past that because I'm not going to put myself down there. I don't want people to think that I'm that much of a prick. Full stop. You know, you, you set boundaries. Mm. You say, I don't care. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to say anything to get a laugh. <laughs> now, now there's a limitation. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the nature of the um, the entertainment. I understand industry. that people have a persona. That's different. They're, that's different. I mean, what you see, you, a lot of people watch these, um, you know, I, I guess, comedians and watch these TV shows and think that they're actually. Uh, they're not it's funny different. people. Well, it's different because with TV, I guess you just you know that they're acting, but with these reality TV shows, you're you're kind of just assuming it's them. But a lot of people do have a per, a persona like that they put out when they're in public and ones that. I mean, I have my. I, I behave very differently when I'm on stage to when I'm, you know, around my friends and whatnot. And because I've realized that as much as I want to be as real as I can, there are things that you're going to say, things about yourself that you're going to be, you're going to open up to people about, and it's going to detrimentally affect how people view you. And if you, unfortunately, you have to do what you have to do before you can do what you want to do. I always say that phrase because the reality of the situation is, if you want to be appreciated by a, a big enough spectrum of the community, you need to fit a particular mindset. You need to. Uh, to carry yourself in a particular way, you need to do a specific, specific type of music that's going to, obviously, you know... Um, I mean, I will the... honestly, downright, disagree yeah. with you, but not not that what you're saying is, is, is wrong, per se, it's just that it is slowly becoming wrong, mm -hmm. because yeah, 15 yeah. years ago, you would have been 100 million percent right, you know, somebody that didn't appeal to a broad spectrum mm -hmm. of people... You know, uh, just wasn't yeah. gonna get anywhere. Wasn't gonna make a living out of it. I know what you're saying. But you're I, you're at an age, yeah. you know, where somebody who sells twenty five thousand records can yeah. raise one point two. No, million. no, I I really have to make this point because you do make a very salient point. But here's the thing: there are so many. It's very hard for you to get your stuff viewed on YouTube, even though it can be viewed to potentially millions of people, right? 
it still is very hard because there's so much bullshit out there. It's still very hard to, to have it noticed by enough people that it can go viral, all right? The reason that people do these shows like X Factor and Idol, right, is that it gives them an opportunity to put themselves up there to a bigger bigger population. And the reality situation is, unless, of course, they compromise aspects of their, their image and who they are, they're not going to get on those shows. That's why you kind of have to do what you have to do initially so that you can at least get on that, that show so that you can appeal enough to appeal to a wider audience in order to get yourself out there and you can actually start doing what you love doing. If you went on with this attitude, I'm just going to do what I want, I'm not going to listen to you, you're not going to get on. You're not going to get the opportunity Dude, but, to actually but, shine. But, 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 yeah, I don't know. Like, what you're saying is, yeah. you know, if you want to be real and make it, you got to be fake first. And I don't know. Like, fake until you make wait, wait, it. Wait, it's wait, the notion wait, wait, within wait, wait, the industry, right? He's, he's, it's one of the most well-known phrases in the industry. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a flip side. Let's say, you, yeah. let's say you come out with a type of song, right? Yeah. Let's, say, let's say it's no one's ever heard country and western, right? Mm. And you come out and do it, right? It's a different genre. Mm. And you get a following. People go, oh, gee, this is interesting, something different. Is that a good way to, to get that notification from those big labels? That they're all thinking about money and, mm -hmm. and people. And you've come out like like when the grunge thing come out, right? Yeah. If you're on the fringe of that and you've got a, a not a bad following and then the, the music company comes and goes, I think this could go somewhere. This guy looks like he's right on the money. He's out there. He's got a few people there and the music's really good. Yeah. And they just go bang and you're the next big thing and you've made it through that. I suppose uh, I'm not big on music. Riding away. Really you just mentioned yeah. it before. That's a really um, good point. What's his name? Who's in another avenue? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as in you're on the fringe of that particular type of music. Yeah, sometimes originality is the best way to go. I'm not saying that there's any definitive way. To but success. you're more worried about. See, here's the thing. But it's. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not worried about. It's I'm just like, trying to no, find no, no, the no. best avenue in order to. I'm not saying yeah. worried. You know, you are. Here's the what I would like assess as uh, something I look at and go like. That's where, like, he's got it wrong. And then just hear me out. Okay. It's this object. It's this object-oriented world. You Like, it's about how do I make it, mm -hmm. you know? And I find that if you just, rather than, you know, thinking about how do I make it, what do I do to make it, how, like, all right, let's just, I love music. I'm just, how do, let, let, let's just get into this let's 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 pick up another instrument let's try this different like like let's just get lost in your music and keep putting mm. it out there like if you get if you get so good at something if you just don't worry about what industry trends da, 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 if you get so good at something that you just you're so in a moment you live it and i've seen you saying you're bloody good at it but if you get so into something and it's about the music, it eventually it might take years. I mean, my Amanda Palmer was a street performer for six freaking years. It, it, it may never come, but what I don't know. But if you're brilliant, if you're truly brilliant, it's really hard in this That's mega funny. super connected uh, era that we live in to not be noticed. I mean, you you'd actually be really unlucky, and you would have to like suck at all of these social media self promotion means if you were brilliant and were noticed. You get mm. what I mean? And mm. I would worry, rather than thinking, how do I make it, is, you know, like, is I want to get, I want to be brilliant. I want to, I want to, at in this music, I want to shine, I want to create something. Yeah. I just want to make, yeah, but you see those artists all the time. More right? amazing you see those artists. Right? That, I respect that point. That's actually, you know, one of the wisest perspectives I've heard you disseminate out in the industry. And uh, as you started, I was like, oh, here we go again, because I've heard a, a slightly different spin on that. But right. I do appreciate what you're saying, that if you love what you're doing, eventually you will become so good at it that it's it's almost impossible that at some way, because of some of the opportunities available to you, by inadvertently you will be able to get to that point Without having to go out and advertise yourself. No, that yourself. doesn't happen. That doesn't happen because so you've you got, disagree you've got, with what he's no, saying. No, yeah, 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 it does because you've got some really great artists out there that just sing their own stuff. And I, I got to try and think of the guy's name. I don't mind his music, may, I but it's not mainstream. Yeah. You know, yeah. he keeps singing it, and he's got a certain following, but he knows he'll never be mainstream. But you know what? He goes, "It's the music I love. It's the music I want to put out." And I don't give a fuck. If he's, I, if I still he's think that attitude's healthier though. Than if he's making a living, wanted, yeah. If yeah, he's but, making a yeah. living doing what no, he does. No, no, but the thing is, you see a lot of these bands and they and oh, can okay, they break up because obviously bands all everyone has a different. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to do this. But let's just say you were doing rhythm and blues, right? And you go, that's all I want to. See. I love it. It's I'm passionate about it. And you might really knock out some really good rhythm and blues songs. But you know, it's not mainstream. You know, you know, you're never going to be up there with. Um, Elvis and Lady yeah. Gaga and Ooh. fucking whoever, but you're really good at what you do, and you go, I'm just not, I'm not interested to go there. 
But you know that if that's where you ha- you've got the voice and you could sing up someone else's pop song to get where you're at. And I remember I saw an interview once with that. Is that that Will Smith? You know how he likes yeah. to. Yeah. He, and, and they tried to set him up with this guy who's been singing 30 years of singing blues. And he's really well known in the US. Don't ask me his name because I don't follow it that much. Okay. And they wanted him to sing a song with Thingo. And he goes, he's going to perpetuate you up the ladder. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. The only reason why you're getting to sing with me is because I got the song, number one, because he writes. Yeah. And he goes, and number two is he's going to use me to bounce himself. Absolutely. That's you know, how it works. Which, which is fine. You, which whole, is fine. He goes. how podcasts work as well. I mean, you've got two people yeah. doing podcasts. They have a fan base. They get together <laughs> and both help each other. And, yeah, but. Like, you've yeah, got something about the Jeremy experience, man. Your Twitter following is going to rise up the roof. That's how it works. Yeah, but he, yeah, but he already said, well. he goes, yeah. I've got 30 years of singing my shit. I ain't going to let this guy bounce off my work. He goes, I'm not going to leave this guy. He goes, because I don't like the way he sings and I don't like his, what, he, what he sings. He's, he'll, he'll sing anything. He'll sing adverts for friggin' chocolate if it makes a buck. Yeah. And I ain't interested in that. And that's he said, but fuck you. But you look, at, you look at a band like Cog. You, have you heard of Cog? No, I haven't. Like, they're a Nazi sort of rock band that, sort of, that, that really know. heavily kind of spiritual, philosophical what's going on in the world. And they were just making music, like totally freaking homemade video clips. Had a bit of an underground following. Mm-hmm. And they made it to the extent that... i got to wind this thing down yeah. soon. I actually got another podcast with one of my friends. He's tried calling me. Let's well, uh, yeah. we'll do we'll, we'll do a five-minute round down if that's okay. cool with you. And let me just finish the scope point. Yep. And Cog made their last album, which is called Sharing Space. It, it sold, had a global following, sold global records, and they got invited to every festival under the sun. And the record labels were after them. The point is, they fell apart the second that, that, that this, they, they had to interact with this industry thing on a daily basis. In a sense, I, I, I really think when people try to turn you into a product, you get a compromise. It's something, something real. What you had, the magic that you have as an artist. Mm-hmm. Some, some of it, some of it goes away. And certainly, some people, through miracle of all miracles, maintain some integrity. I mean, I can't help but look at fucking Michael Jackson and go like, how the hell did you keep making such great music when? Well, Michael Jackson, believe me, he would have had to know, make many compromises when he first signed to his major label. But he would that, have to my point is. Yeah. You know, it's the rare example, you know, even though he's, he has, his albums had a ton of shit songs and he did a ton of dumb shit and his life was, his life was, his, he dumb, did, dumb shit, he's Michael Jackson, man, what the fuck His life was here? ruined, <laughs> his life was ruined by this thing that he excelled at, but nonetheless, oh, I, I mean, I see what you mean, yeah, there. At least in terms of music? Yes. Do you more all stuff, own stuff? Not all of his stuff. A lot of stuff was co-written there. Like he's much made, of it. Yeah, like first album. No, but he was. Uh, what's that? Uh, Quincy. Quincy. Uh, Quincy Jones. Quincy right? Jones. Yeah, that Which was his thing. That was the, the. That was Thriller. But that was that was main, most of the tracks. They were mainly uh, what well, was produced by Quincy Jones. As far as the originality, I'm sure <laughs> Michael Jackson had influence. Billy Jean was a song that he wrote. But you know how it works. You you come up with a song, but the producer does most of Michael, the beats. Michael. Michael Jackson. It's not completely your work. Wasn't writing music till really late on. He was yeah, actually making his own beats, like a beatbox, recording yeah. those. He and tried doing that on his, one of, you know, the Invincible album, and it didn't go too well. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, I mean, the reason I brought him up is he's like he's, he's an example that he was, you know, propped up on the mountain of artificialness and fakeness and everything yeah. from his appearance to his skin wound up being plastic, but... And then he made it, and then he was able to do what the hell he wanted to do. Something, some no. of that... He wasn't able to do what he wanted to do, eventually but I'm trying was. to say... Eventually he was, bro. I'm trying what? to say that at least... <laughs> if he was, wasn't able to do what he wanted to do at his height of his career, some no spirit, one is, man. Some his, spirit yeah. survived, you know? Some, something, something legitimate and original and authentic mm. was still in the music. Despite Definitely. the industry, but in a sense, you're looking. If Michael Jackson is a success story, look how fucked up his life turned out, and that's a success story. Yeah. So if that is a success story, what the of, fuck is failure? Ah, uh, well, for phenomenal greatness like Michael Jackson, always comes in enough. So that's like one yeah. of the alchemical laws, you know. Like you can't get something for nothing. It's just yeah. that's just part. But the the point that I want to, you know, hum, I kind of just. Get get to is that at the end of the day you have to compromise something if you're gonna get to the top. 
whether or not it's uh, working your ass off or compromising the kind of music you do in order to appeal to... God, working your ass off isn't compromise. Well, it is, because it you're is, giving up a lot. You're giving up something else. Absolutely. That is, it's a compromise. You, it brought, the, I, I, this sounds crazy, but believe me, for the last six months, I have been working my ass off, like rehearsing three to four hours every single day, believe wow. it or not. I have been... I've been, you know, doing. I've been sprinting. I've been training purely just for my vocal ability, a whole bunch of stuff. If that's not compromise, and by not by doing that, I'm not having time to focus on, let's say, podcasts or having a nine to five job and doing other stuff. Mm. There is definitely a compromise going on with mm. any person that achieves greatness. That's when pe- the idea of someone What's just. Mine? This is why I just have to address this. That's why the idea of someone just achieving tremendous amount of sex, success so easily, right, without failure, to me seems like what the frack? How the hell are you doing that? Because unless, of course, you're an, you're an absolute savant. Chances are you're going to have to overcome hurdles. There's going to be some failure that's going to have to force yeah, you to grow. I just, I, I, I understand what you're saying yeah. about failure, but there's some people like, like you're talking about your father. Definitely. Which I really respect. Awesome. So do I. Because, it's annoying because to Because if, if they put their mind to anything, they just, they just know that, that they can achieve it. Yeah. You know, now, now, whether, they, whether they're like a, a savant and they just get it, it just happens, which is great. You know, good luck to them. But some guys, they can just work at it and it just comes. Yeah. Because they're good, at, and you find that with a lot of things. There's guys that can play sport, and they they play one sport that's totally different to some other. Yeah. Yet they get to the peak in that one, and they go, mm. "I'll move on to this one," and they're at their peak in the other one. It's it's mm. it's just an easy transition. Mm. And you go, "How the fuck?" Do you but I, will, start, I will I give you. I will give you one. Once you find the way, once you see the way broadly, you yeah. see the way in all things. They become great at something that, within the essence of that, they can apply that to whatever it is that they want to do. And it's mm. that discipline that allows them to achieve that. It's not a, I'm just by. It, it, it comes from hard work. That's what I'm saying. And chances are, I will. I'll, I'll give you one I thing. Passion, I, I will give you one yeah. one thing in your mindset that I feel is wonderful and advanced, and it took right. me then we'll years up, gonna, yeah. to get it. And you know, you draw. My, you want to achieve something great, and it's much more fulfilling to fail repeatedly at an attempt to change the world than it is. To be a freaking robot drone, absolutely rotator. Fair enough. Through no, I'm 100. percent So I think to end this podcast, what do you want to be? Let's let's go around. What do you want to be? What do you want to end up being? What's I want to live. You know, I want to I want to make I'm devices. Sorry. I want to make devices that that change the world, that help people meet their needs, and I want to have a comfortable living out of it. I don't I don't need to make millions. I just want to wake mm-hmm. up every morning knowing that you know the meals are there. I'm doing something I enjoy. So yeah, I want to I want to make a difference and enjoy what I'm doing and that's pretty much in in a rough sense, you know. That could mean a hundred different things. Fantastic. But that's it. What do you want to be? I'm going to be brief in this one. I want to aspire to inspire until ex- I expire. Period. <laughs> All right. Leave it Me, there. I got two choices. I want to be a dictator, run everything the way I want it to do and <laughs> fuck a lot of people over. That's number one. Yeah, that fuck a lot of people. Well, that's it. Now, if I was to run this country, I would change things tomorrow like you wouldn't believe. I, and I reckon the only way to change things in any in any country is you've got to be a dictator. I mean, mm-hmm. serious. You just say, this is the way it is. This is the way I want it. This is the way it's going to be. And that's, that's it. That's for another discussion. Now, but I, that's, I, that's I, one way. And the second thing is, I'm very close to Sonny. If someone paid my bills, right, if mm-hmm. I got my bills paid every week, I'd just like to go out into the back shed, tinker around and build stuff, and give it away. And I'm talking about things that will change the way things are. Yeah, I want to give it away. I don't know about the dictator thing, though, man. Especially, come on, man. You've got to let people do their own no, shit. No, no, I'll be honest with you. No, no, I'll be honest with you. The reason why I said that is because I see all these problems. You know, I see this, you know, Liberal Party does this, Labor Party does that, this politics. And, and this whole politics thing is so bullshit because you're playing in their sandpit. So if I, if I wanted to, if I want, no, no, if yeah. I wanted to change the world tomorrow mm-hmm. and someone said, well, why don't you get a political party up? Well, why don't you go out there and become, and you know what? I don't want to play in that sandpit. Because I know it's corrupt, and I know that you'll be forced to do things that you never want to do. That's true. So guess what? You get in there as a dictator. <laughs> you, you have the same mindset that any, every other great person has said. That look, I know the best way to, to, to govern this country, and you're going to do all everything. No, 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 no,
<laughs> check out check out my website chrisshull.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-O-O-L.com. You can check out my music, my podcast there. Sunny Vice. In- introduce CMR. the song. You will send me an MP3. I'll I'll put it at the end of this podcast. Yeah, um, absolutely. Man. What song? Um, I, I have one. a track called "You Could Be." It was probably one of the first tracks I, I wrote. It's on my album Indefinable. Check that out. You it's could be popular. coming out right Peace now. Peace out, guys. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Uh, you can see me on the website. I'm, I'm, I'm the dictator. You guys are scholars and gentlemen. <laughs> Appreciate the crack out of you. Take care. Mwah. Mwah.
Shoulders icy, colder, bowing in a death wish. Da -da 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 -da. 